All right, before we get started with the Lingmo review, I just wanted to say stick around at the end because what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my honest, you know, <laughs> no pulling any punches PTS review for not only this brand set, but also the named items associated with it. And after that, I will give you a new perspective. I'll play devil's advocate because it's been about a week since the PTS started. And, well, I, I've been thinking about how this could possibly, you know, help out the community. So stick around for that. But without further ado, let's get into that Lingmo review. All right. This is not going to be a long video at all. Um, and if you read the title, you probably know where this is going to go. This is the worst part of the PTS, in my opinion, for Year 5 Season 2. I'm going to explain everything, and I'm going to explain everything why I think it's the worst thing coming with Year 5 Season 2. So here we go. What's going on, YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 PTS video. Now, I'm going to talk about the new brand set, and I'm going to talk about the new named gear items. And I'm going to share with you my review. So, with that being said, sit back, relax, grab that popcorn. Don't forget to hit that like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. But we are going to talk about the new gear items and brand set. Because they coexist. We have Perfectly Mad Bomber. And we have Perfectly Unstoppable Force. Now, I'm adding all of these into the same video, and it's all going to fall under my perfectly unbreakable thumbnail because this brand set doesn't even, it's not even worth its own video. And perfectly Mad Bomber, I'm not even going to talk about because the new exotic technically is better than the new perfectly Mad Bomber, and both of them are pretty much useless in my opinion. Like, it will be fun for some people to use, you know, grenade builds. It, it'll be different. And yes, you will be able to use it with, you know, like the uh, sledgehammer talent and things like that. But overall, let, let's be real. The, the masses are not going to use it. Just like a majority of everyone doesn't use the original Mad Bomber. Now, talking about the actual brand set... Um, 23 or 20% explosive resistance uh, on a three piece bonus set is, is not fun. The explosive resistance, I'm guessing, for their logic, would go with like a grenade build, you know, oh yeah, grenade explosions, you know, run explosive resistance. But that's probably one of the dumbest things ever. Um, running explosive resistance will not help you against a grenade build, it won't it's it's just not going to and i think it's just poor um poor decision making for this brand set explosive resistance is not going to be used the skill health again is not going to be used and then obviously the 15 lmg damage is really nice um and it, it's really cool seeing the 15 percent you, you see right here on hunter's fury you see 15 percent um, and you would see 15% on, like, a Heartbreaker. So you are getting more LMG damage from this brand set. But it would take three just to get that. And it's not worth it. Because if you just wear Contractor's Gloves and get the 10% LMG with the damage to armor, that'll hit harder than the 15%. So I don't know. Maybe if they switch the LMG to, like, the first brand set... And then do explosive resistance for the second, and then skill health for the, for the third. Maybe I, I don't like skill health. It doesn't help you at all in this game. And explosive resistance is one of the least used attributes in the game, next to like health. There's no reason for this. Uh, I I just I really cannot think of any builds I want to use with this brand set. I will not be using this brand set if this is how it gets released. It's a horrible brand set. I would uh, put this in like the lowest tier of brand sets because it, it would be a very, very niche type of build to utilize these uh, brand sets, and it, they don't go together. Uh, very poor choosing. 
um, decision making. And then, of course, the star of the show, perfectly unstoppable force, right? So this one, they want you to use it with a grenade. That's why they added on here, grenade kills will give you two stacks. But again, come on. Really? Why? It makes no sense. People already don't use unstoppable force. People don't really use grenade builds either. I understand that you're trying to force this, but it's not going to work. People are not going to use this crap, man. Perfectly unstoppable force with explosive resistance, what's that going to do for us? Nothing. It's going to do nothing. Unless they want us to use it like this with a three-piece and use it with perfectly mad bomber and perfect, like, that would be the only way. But again, no one's going to use this combination. Perfectly Mad Bomber increases the grenade radius, but it does not increase the grenade damage. You can cook a grenade, but that's it. And yes, you do get that bonus armor while aiming, but so what? You're throwing a grenade. You're better off using that new exotic because it gives you nearly the same radius. It gives you more grenades. It gives you more grenade damage, and it gives you more damage to people that don't die from the grenade in the first place. I mean, there's no reason to use this. So here's what I said on Twitter, okay? Or X, if you nasty. I said, why not switch these talents? Why not put perfectly unstoppable force on the chest piece and then put perfectly mad bomber on the backpack? That way, you could double stack the unstoppable force, kind of like what they did with Companion, and then you could double stack, you know, perfect mad bomber with that new exotic because increasing the radius even more would make it just that much more fun. I think that if they were to do that, put this talent on the backpack and then put perfectly unstoppable force on the chest piece, I think the community would love that because that would open up more build diversity. That would actually get me to use a grenade build. If I had the ability to cook it from the Perfectly Mad Bomber and have all those perks from the new collector uh, grenade uh, chest piece, it would be amazing. I would use grenades all day. All day, baby. But that's not the case here. And then same with Perfectly Unstoppable Force. It seems like it would be fun, but it's not that great of a talent. I mean... Just look right here at Vigilance, okay? So Vigilance versus Perfectly Unstoppable Force. Perfectly Unstoppable Force can get you up to 35% damage, right? But you would need 7 kills. Just to reach Vigilance, the 25%, you would have to get 5 kills. Or 2 grenade kills and 1 weapon kill. Like, are you serious? Just use Vigilance. You get more damage more often. You would have to get all of those kills just for Unstoppable Force to be worth it. And by that time, you're already halfway through an encounter or halfway through a mission. It's not going to matter. And if you're worried about getting damage on kill, just use the Memento Backpack. You'll get damage on kill, you'll get armor on kill, and you'll get skill efficiency on kill. This is just poor decision making. So I would say put perfectly unstoppable force on the chest piece, put perfectly mad bomber on the backpack. Switch up these brand set talents or these brand set bonuses. Put LMG at just put on two. Switch the skill health and uh, sk uh, skill health and LMG damage. Switch those. No one's going to use the skill health. Just put it in the third one. All right, just just do that. And then make it to where people have to use at least two Lingmo to get that LMG damage. Do it that way. It'll balance everything out. Switch these talents around, chest to backpack and vice versa. And that will increase your build diversity and help out the community. But the way that this sits right now, I will never use it. I will never use this backpack chest piece or this brand set at all. I just won't. I might, might. The smallest percentage might use one of these Lingmo items 
and try an explosive resistance build just to see how high I can get it. But it's going to be a gimmick because no one in their right mind would run an explosive resistance build. Because guess what? If I have a grenade build in PvP and I see that you're running all explosive resistance, I'm going to immediately switch to a grenade that has a status effect, whether it be a fire grenade, riot foam grenade, any any of those, because I know it'll hurt you really bad because you're specced only into explosive resistance. It's that easy. If you're running a cluster, frag, or a concussion and someone's running explosive resistance, just switch it to an incendiary grenade. Bye-bye. And they get burnt. I mean, come on. <sighs> but let me know what you think in the comment section below. I know you probably clicked on this for my review for Perfectly Unstoppable Force, but it's not worth it. It is not worth it in my opinion at all. If it was on the chess piece and I could put this with normal Unstoppable Force and combine the two and just have like a crazy damage on kill, armor on kill type of build, I would. I'd do that. That sounds amazing. Sounds really fun. But the way it sits right now, no siri, Bob. No thank you. Um, all, all of it's bad. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm sorry for that to be uh, negative, but that's my honest opinion about this brand set. I will not use it the way it sits. I really hope it gets tweaked before year five, season two. And again, let me know what you think. Hit that like, subscribe. You know the little YouTube spiel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. And devil's advocate. Okay, so how could the Lingmo really be beneficial? Um, thinking about putting those named items together, I can see how they tried to make it beneficial. Meaning, the perfectly mad bomber and the perfectly unstoppable force, with that little blurb about the grenades, they kind of made it to where they want you to wear at least two pieces of the Lingmo. My problem with that is the two-piece bonus is skill health. So it doesn't really make it worth it. So after, you know, it's been a few days after that, uh, you know, startling review, I come to the conclusion that they really just need to switch out the skill health. The explosive resistance could be beneficial, I do agree, but that skill health just really kills that brand set, um, its overall value. Because I do want to try out a perfect Mad Bomber, perfectly unstoppable force build, the way that they've designed it, but I just do not see any benefit of having skill health opposed to all of the other attributes in the game. So, it would probably be more beneficial for you to wear a three-piece, but then you are sacrificing one attribute for explosive resistance, which not a lot of people use, and then you're risking and sacrificing another attribute for skill health. Also that you could potentially, you know, benefit from that 15% LMG damage. I don't know. Let, let me know what you think about the order of those uh, brand sets. I just really can't get my head around the skill health aspect of it. However, I do understand how they were trying to put the Mad Bomber and the Unstoppable Force together. That way you could try to, um, you know, utilize those two as a combo set and then maybe, you know, add in the perfectly sledge or perfect sledgehammer from the lefty. And then you could just throw grenades, proc uh, sledgehammer, run up in there with ACS-12, do -do 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 -do, they're all dead, move on. And then with the, you know, unstoppable force and mad bomber, that could be a lot of fun. But I just can't get over those brand set bonuses and the order in which they were chosen. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm sorry if this was harsh or not harsh enough. Let me know what you think. And uh, while you're at it, support the channel. Hit that like, subscribe. I'm Kamikaze Von Doom. Have a good day, everyone. Peace out.